Good morning. Welcome to SunUp. This morning we want to reintroduce you to a crop that a lot of Oklahomans experimented with a while back but has changed quite a bit in that time. Here to tell us about sesame is Chad Godsey. Chad, how you doing today? Good, good. Good. Let's talk about the crop here. This is something I guess that there was a time not too long ago when this was tried out in Oklahoma and not with a lot of success. Uh, yeah, that's true. In, in, in the early 90s, mid 90s, uh, a lot of producers have kind of experimented with sesame. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in that time period, there's still a lot of shattering uh, that occurred. Uh, however, uh, now with the varieties uh, th that they currently have, uh, the genetic improvement has been tremendous over the, over the last decade, uh, decade and a half. Uh, shatter, nearly shatterproof. Um, very shatter resistant, uh, so uh, it, it is being kind of reintroduced and, and a lot of interest has been generated the, these last few years. Okay. Now let's talk about the market for this crop. There's really a lot of demand for it. Uh, th there is. Um, really, uh, you know, the demand from a food side and, and oil side is tremendous. Um, and really, uh, it's nice because we do have a market for sesame uh, already developed, uh, which, which sometimes with our newer crops, of, of course, that's the thing we struggle with is, is finding a market. Let's talk for a second about the use of this crop. I know there's you know, food uses, oil use and all that. How does that break down? Um, well, yeah, like, like you mentioned, uh, food and oil are the two big uses uh, currently of sesame. Uh, oil, typically uh, around 60% uh, of the sesame grown uh, it goes, to, goes to oil, uh, and then the 40, uh, remaining 40 for, uh, for food consumption. And with food, it's not just the tops of hamburger buns like we tend to think about around here, I guess. What other products are we talking about? No, uh, definitely not. Uh, you know, hamburger, of course, is the one that probably everybody thinks of uh, or on, on top of bread, but uh, also used for, for hummus, um, you know, in not only the U.S., but, uh, uh, but, but uh, foreign countries. Uh, the, the foreign export market uh, yeah, is, is, is tremendous. Well, let's talk about that because this, this is uh, not a huge crop for the U.S. It hasn't been, but that's one of the reasons we're looking at it. Is there something about our market that in terms of exports, we really have got some opportunity. It, it is, uh, you know, our, our I guess our, our markets uh, are, are somewhat stable uh, com compared to, uh, to to other countries, uh, and uh, so the, the the foreign market or the export market uh, is pretty uh, pretty consistent. Uh, and really, you know, as many as many acres of sesame as we could grow, I, I think we really do have a market for that, uh, just because of the strong export. So this is something we've got a ways to grow before we start really hurting ourselves in terms of price and so on. Definitely, definitely, yes. Okay. And okay, let's take a second to talk about anatomy. For those who haven't seen here, we're talking the sesame seeds are actually in these pods right here, correct? Correct, correct. Uh, ses uh, most, most sesame varieties will tend to, to begin blooming uh, 30 to, to 40 days uh, after emergence um, and then continue to bloom an indeterminate crop. Um, and uh, so it'll set uh, set these pods or capsules, um, and then uh, yeah, the seeds uh, seeds will be inside the inside the capsules. And in each one of these pods, there's quite a few seeds. Uh, there is, uh, you know, it depends a little bit on variety, uh, but I would say anywhere from you know 60 to 80 to, to even 100 uh, seeds per capsule. Okay, very good. Now let's talk about the, the challenges of growing this crop. What first of all, what what kind of time frame are we looking for? Okay. Um, really, the, uh, uh, as far as sesame in Oklahoma, really a fairly wide planting window. Uh, it could be planted as, a, uh, as an early season crop uh, in late April, probably early May. Uh, but also, in probably where I think it maybe has its best fit would be as a double crop uh, after wheat harvest uh, in, in mid to late June. Um, so really a wide planting window, which uh, is excellent. Probably some of the, the stand establishment uh, in early season weed control is probably the toughest. Uh, as far as stand establishment, uh, it's a small seeded crop, uh, so it's got to be planted fairly shallow. Uh, typically, we rec uh, rec it's recommended at anywhere from a half to, to no deeper than an inch. Uh, and, but as long as you have soil moisture at that depth, uh, I mean, germination happens pretty rapid. So as we look around the state, what parts of the state really does this crop fit the best? Uh, currently, we're really focusing, you know, I guess west of west of I-35, uh, just because of the rotational need in our in our w uh, continuous winter wheat systems, uh, and, and of course, it, you know, sesame handles the the, the heat and uh, in dry or dry periods better than some of our, our summer crops. So, uh, but I really, I, I think it probably could be grown anywhere. Uh, although, you know, we we have data from the last couple of years in the western part of west of 35. How does it compare in a in a no-till system versus conventional? Okay. Um, e either one, uh, e either system um, can be used. 
Uh, you know, no-till, I personally like no-till uh, just from the soil moisture conservation standpoint, it, keeping, keeping moisture shallower where that seed is, okay. uh, especially into, into the late May, early June time period. That establishment period. Where, yep, yep. Okay. And th some moisture right then is really critical for this crop. It is, to, to get it off to a, to a quick start. Uh, those first 30 days are really critical because it, not a lot of growth happens the first 30 days. Uh, so having moisture that time will, will help that growth, uh, but then yeah, once you get to that 30 days, uh, it really really takes off. So that's that's when you need that moisture to really dig in the root system and get it ready to go. Yep, yep, get an excellent root system established and, and get it off to a good start. All right, now what about equipment? Is does this work with what our producers already have? It, it does. Uh, basically, uh, grain, you know, the same grain drill they use for wheat can be used with sesame. Uh, you, you could plant it on seven and a half uh, or 15 inch row spacings. Uh, that's actually what we're looking at here is a row spacing study. Uh, and, and really, depending on conditions, you know, very unlikely there'll be going to be a huge difference in yield between seven and a half and 15. Just, just depends on, on the conditions. Uh, then really anything else you need, I mean, sprayer, uh, combine, uh, that's, about, that's about it. Uh, so very little, uh, very little uh, equipment expense up front. It's a very interesting crop for our producers in terms of a rotational crop and additional crop for their, essentially for their summer. It is, it is. Uh, you know, sesame is a, is a uh, drought, uh, you know, I hate, I hate to call anything drought tolerant because, uh, I mean, it still does need water, uh, but it does handle the heat uh, and, uh, and can handle a fairly significant drought stress. Uh, and you know we have plenty of that in most uh, most summers in Oklahoma. Like uh, this past uh, or in late July and in uh, early August, uh, we we struggled with a little heat. And, and this crop well, was under some stress, uh, but it's recovered well uh, with with rains at, at uh, key times. So uh, it does handle the, our environment very well. Very good. All right, well, we're going to go over to Dave Deacon, who's going to talk with Joe Armstrong and see about some weed control here in Sesame. Well, Austin and Chad were talking about the, the sesame here in Oklahoma, and what are some of the limitations when it comes to weed control and weed management uh, whenever it comes to sesame? One of the big problems is we just don't have very many herbicide options available. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last few years, we've been operating under what's called a Section 18 or Section 24C label, kind of an emergency exemption. Uh, we've been able to use dual magnum pre-emerge. That, that product is usually used in uh, soybeans or grain sorghum or peanuts or right. corn, um, but it can be used in sesame as well. Um, it, it's a little bit touchy sometimes. It, it needs some moisture to be activated into the soil, um, but it, if you get too much moisture right after planting, uh, you can wash that herbicide into the seed zone and, and maybe see some stand reduction or injury. Ooh. Generally, it's not going to be a, a yield reducing problem, but, but it is something to be aware of. In terms of post-emergence herbicides, we only have one. Really? Select Max, okay. and that, that is strictly for grass control. Now, obviously, Johnson grass or crabgrass can be a big problem in sesame, so it is useful, but we don't have any broadleaf products hmm. post emergence. So, uh, getting that pre emergence herbicide out and, and using it appropriately is going to be uh, crucial to get the foundation for your weed control program. What about whenever it comes to a follow up crop? Yeah, well, sesame fits in very well in, in rotation. Um, it, it can be a little bit tricky because of some of the herbicides we use in, in wheat or, or grain sorghum. Um, so I would always recommend going first to the herbicide label to, to check the rotation restriction uh, for plant back time to sesame. Now the problem with that is sesame is kind of a, a, a small acre crop, so right. we, don't, we don't see it on very many herbicide labels. The old rule of thumb that I've been told is if you're safe to plant back to cotton in terms of rotation restriction, mm -hmm. then you'd be safe to plant back to sesame. Now that rule doesn't apply 100% of the time, but generally speaking, uh, sesame would fit in there where, where cotton would fit in. So, so it opens it up possibly to maybe a catch crop also. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, if you had, say, cotton that got hailed out mm -hmm. or maybe corn that got flooded out, right. uh, sesame can fit in there. I, I'd be a little bit careful, again, depending on what herbicides you've used. Uh, you know, we use more glyphosate resistant crops, and so uh, some guys don't use pre-emergence herbicides. There's nothing down, mm -hmm. and sesame would have a great fit in there. Uh, just depends on what herbicides you've used in the previous crops there. Well, and and as you're looking at here, you guys are are doing studies on uh, on uh, row spacing. How how is that affecting uh, the weeds weed management in the field? Well, just like any other crop, you know, the more narrow the row spacing, mm -hmm. the better crop canopy, the more early crop canopy you're going to have, and that's going to help 
provide what we call cultural weed control practices. Um, you know, sesame can be grown 30 inch rows down to seven and a half inch rows. Really? It's kind of a trade off. Obviously, the narrow rows are going to provide you more canopy cover uh, earlier in the season, but you lose the ability to cultivate between rows if, if that was something you're interested in doing in a conventional till system. So it just depends on what your overall tillage practices are and your overall weed control practices that you want to fit into your farm there. Well, very good. Well, hopefully this will fit in and uh, open up some sesame in Oklahoma. Big rotational crop. Yeah. There we go.